Welcome back to the techno-communism conversation. I'm Johanan Ben Zion, a voice crying out in the wilderness, crying out for a technological new Jerusalem. And um, I titled this uh, um, in the re uh, what a cybernetic communist or a scientific communist a title that it would probably raise their hackles, put them uh, a little bit of uh, ill ease, um, and that is because uh, um, the idea for um, a serious-minded socialist or a person uh, favorably inclined to cybernetic communism, we have to, of course, there are relatively few. Very unfortunate because this um, recognition that uh, we need to dismantle post haste uh, these um, systems that are killing our species and our planet um, and uh, that um, so a revolutionary program is necessary. That's something that some certain number of people understand, not nearly enough certainly not nearly enough in the fascist United States. Um, when you um, consider then that advanced computing, so-called AI, is the most powerful revolutionary tool in human history, a revolutionary weapon unlike any other, how many people are fulfilling these two conditions of recognizing that, and also being willing to fight for a humane and sustainable economic system, Virtually no tech-minded person or technologist, certainly, which is unfortunate. Uh, the very people who should have those qualities do not um, in the West. Um, I can really speak only uh, about the United States and, to some degree, um, some of the other North Atlantic powers in this context, um, uh, for the most part. Um, and uh, so um, this uh, title is meant to uh, uh, um, uh, segue into a conversation about how um, difficult it is to build um, a large open source large language model multi-agent system that's designed to be a decentralized autonomous organization. This thing that I've described as a workforce multiplier tremendous capacity um, um, because uh, um, in a place as corrupt as the United States um, there is no place to turn where you could um, marshal the resources and personnel uh, to build such a thing in defiance of empire and financial capital. I think of uh, famed uh, industrialists of the early 20th century outside of the United States or some Germans and others who were um, you know billionaires by adjusting for inflation who nevertheless um, assisted with the building of this um, Soviet Union so they were wealthy industrialists or let's say mega millionaires adjusting for inflation um, who um, um, who contributed resources and um, and um, and other such to um, helping to build um, uh, state socialism. Um, some of these were people who um, had f tried to do the same thing in Germany, uh, which in in the year 1900, if you asked anyone, where it's most likely to be the country where state socialism might first take root, or there might be established a state socialist form, um, they almost all would have said Germany. Nobody would have said Russia. <laughs> um, and um, um, some of them might have said some other countries, France, the United States, or the UK. Um, the UK was uh, the first to industrialize in the ways that we understand it, and um, and uh, Germany was um, um, and other countries 
uh, followed suit, but Germany had um, just a political organization and, and attitudes of the people at that time to uh, support such a thing. Unfortunately, uh, the forces of uh, elitism and uh, bourgeois filth uh, were able to distort that into um, a thing that was not socialism, like national socialism, and subsequently other um, equally disturbing bourgeois forms. You should never assume for a moment that national socialism somehow worse, uh, so far m much worse than other fascistic forms. Uh, that's um, that's a popular conceit on the part of the American and Western mind generally, um, where um, they imagine that uh, uh, the uh, uh, there's this one scapegoated group, uh, the German of 1930s and 1940s, um, who was extremely bad and should be regarded as uh, as bad or worse as anyone else, but. Um, all of the people who are generally uh, describing them in these terms are also imperialists, elitist, um, uh, bourgeois filth of the highest order. You know, this, you know, there's only one way to describe the United States, and that is as a fascist country. The, the Nazi Germany, um, as bad as they were, and they did horrible, horrible things that should not be understated. As bad as they were, what they didn't do was cause the extinction of humankind, uh, a worse crime than almost any that could be imagined. Uh, and in in this way that we frame uh, humanism and 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 and, and uh, human affairs, um, that's. But that is something that the United States has done and uh, worked capably toward the annihilation of the human species, um, pretty well since that time. That is to say the fall of the Third Reich. Um, it, the fall of the, the most coherent thing that you can say about the United States and the fall of the Third Reich is what is observed when you say the words Project Paperclip, where the United States uh, instantly imported at that moment thousands and thousands across many sectors, thousands and thousands of uh, Nazis into positions of influence, um, and um, and converted itself um, into a, um, a crypto fascist, but equally Nazi uh, Nazi like um, um, entity uh, with um, you know. And there, prior to that time, there was no case to be made that the United States was not Nazi like. The Nazis. Um, well, many of them on record, Hitler and many others on record, saying, "Well, we, you know, we look at to, we look to the United States as our great example, when we think about our um, uh, hatred uh, for Jews and how we um, are murder, mass murdering uh, so many Jews. We look to the United States treatment of, of um, Native Americans and African Americans. Those, those models." Uh, what we are basing our on, and we will consider ourselves successful when we've done uh, to Jews what uh, um, the United States have already done to Native Americans and African Americans. And um, <laughs> so anybody is telling you that the United States is uh, not fascist um, on some measure or other when uh, by 99 out of 100 measures they are um, as fascist or worse than anything that's ever existed. Now that's a person who's um, denying the existence of fascists. And um, um, this, um, um, how do you find people in this uh, fascist milieu where um, the, the only people that are um, allowed to work at the um, productive level, the highest level, um, any level are people who ex are, accept this twisted set of paradigms and um, and will do violence to people who don't. Um, that's a little different from the situation where you have a German a German person say, I made a lot of money, but I do want to bring about the abolition of private wealth. I don't, I see the contradiction there, but I'm trying to do the right thing. 
That's very different from the 20th century um, 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 oligarch, uh, the late 20th or early 21st century oligarch who um, um, is just just so corrupt as to, to just to be a demon. Um, and um, um, so in, in a couple of efforts of trying to put together a team to build this uh, decentralized autonomous organization of uh, large language models that are open source into a multi-agent system with this workforce multiplier um, it's it, it, it comes up you know there's just no one to be found who would you would work with for example in in a startup of technically a rather similar kind um, you would be uh, working with venture capitalists and financial capital, but how would you possibly find in that uh, fascist milieu a, a venture capitalist who would um, um, be that d diamond in the rough, that one in a million person who um, um, is like that ger the German industrialists of the early 20th century that uh, contributed covertly to the building of state socialism. You, 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 you won't, you won't find them. You'll find, uh, as I have found in great number, um, people who uh, lie and say that they want a humane, stable economic system, but actually will sabotage your, what you're doing. <laughs> That's been my experience uniformly, quite uniformly. With tech-focused people and uh, and technologists, and the, this is why I would say, if you have the uh, resources, ingenuity, and most importantly, organization to build such a thing outside of the U.S., you should do it. You should do it outside of the United States. United States is it's it's this United States is cooked, man. There's no. And what, are you, what are you supposed to do with this? What are you supposed to do with a bunch of fascists who've been fascists for hundreds of years and who are insisting on continuing to kill the planet? You should shoot them, right? That's what you should do with them. And you can't, there's no negotiating with these people. There's no planning to, to fix such a thing. And I, I'd like to believe that it's possible. Um, I, I don't think it is. Uh, it's just John Brown said that I believe that, um, um, only the great sins of this land can be purged away through blood, and um, I don't, no lies detected, right? Um, the uh, the 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 work of, of this kind, you say uh, to people, we build this thing that is a humanitarian project, unlike any other thing. This workforce multiplier, which with a few thousand users is of interest to um, um, uh, maybe some humanitarian project. In, with a few million, a few hundred thousand or a few million users, it's a thing that's uh, powerful enough to uh, um, leverage a kind of influence to stop capitalism's climate apocalypse from killing, killing humankind, which it goes hand in hand with uh, stopping is making the United States military industrial complex cease to exist. Um, the United States military industrial complex is not some um, benevolent uh, thing. It's the world's worst polluter. Um, but it's worse than just merely being the world's worst polluter because of um, um, 670 full-on military bases and thousands of military installations around the world that um, that a pollute unlike anything else because the whole function of functioning of that operation is to protect other super polluting corporations you know the original sin of the United States and the UK um, in the Middle East that's pointed to there are many many misdeeds before but through the, the thing that was the the domino that started the cascading of um, of um, of political Islam and the, this kind of scapegoating of people as a result um, was um, the overthrow of Mohammed Mossadegh in Iran, a country that you hear about a lot in the last few days, 
and um, and always and um, um, the installation of the Shah of Iran um, on basically just so that British Petroleum wouldn't lose a small amount of its holdings will destroy entire nations just uh, to avoid inconveniencing a few fucking people um, in the smallest fucking way uh, if you don't think that sort of thing happens now uh, better than three quarters of a century later um, uh, consider the coronavirus outbreak where the United States um, uh, could have um, ended you know, just by snapping its fingers ended international flights across the world um, it's what everybody would have done if the United States had insisted on it but that would have upset uh, the shareholders of those um, uh, those vile for profit uh, airlines so the plan instead is to kill millions and millions of people and at um, every point um, at every point in the existence and operations of the United States you see uh, such heinous heinous crimes and um, uh, so how do you uh, how do you build such a thing in the United States well a thing that's backfired for me in trying to build an organization along these lines to a certain degree as being this thing of being an agitator and admittedly doing some other thing weird things besides that maybe don't uh, conform with what I uh, would like to see as the good work of the agitator or what what uh, scientific communists would agree is the good work of the agitator there was a time when I was not a cybernetic communist and not, and most importantly, I've not really made a study of these, uh, read the kinds of works that would allow, allow me to seriously consider all of this and, and, and write about this. Um, and in a time I did stupid things like eating a, a burger that contained a small amount of cells made of, uh, uh made of human flesh. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, the um, um, uh, so people um, but people see agitators it wouldn't matter if I had done that or not in my view uh, because uh, people see agitators the people who um, are doing the most to um, in this non-revolutionary context uh, to bring about um, a revolutionary movement they nevertheless see them as part of the problem rather than part of the solution of the standing up for a humane and sustainable economic system without which a humane and sustainable world cannot exist um, and uh, you know those are liberals those are those people are dog shit right because all of you know that we are five years away from runaway overheating caused by capitalism's climate apocalypse and all of you then must understand a revolutionary action, word and deed, praxis is a concept uh, that scientific communists uh, refer to here. Um, there, where word and deed are, um, are so intertwined as to be indistinguishable, basically, um, but that um, that word and deed uh, must be undertaken at all times by all who truly understand this uh, to um, to stop uh, this omnicide. But the liberal, you know, I was thinking about, uh, I said this on the last show, I guess, that there's this woman, Medea Benjamin, I've shared her stuff on, on Twitter, um, when she's um, kind of had some expose about um, the state of Israel. Um, but she's, she's liberal dog shit of the kind that I just described, right? Because um, when there's people who are taking some direct action, or uh, some more militant action than that in the context uh, in these contexts she's saying what the police will say right what do the police say when someone takes direct action or militant action this is bad for the community you know, you're bad for the community your fascism is what's bad for the community the people who are fighting that are absolutely good for the community and um and that's what medea benjamin says that's what liberals say uh, liberals are in insisting um, in, in the then that's a, essentially the whole European descended majority of the United States are people who are insisting 
uh, that you uh, play the game by the rules that have been rigged by fascists in in such a way that even if those reforms were not rigged even if they were not sabotaged by their nature um, um, it still would not be enough time to end capitalism's climate apocalypse in the five years we have left before runaway for heating turns um, according to every climate scientist planet earth into a place more like the planet venus than planet earth rendering it inhospitable for multicellular life probably multicellular life of many forms besides mammalian life like ourselves um, but um, certainly not good for not good for primates and um, now that's the path that we're on and almost every person of influence of the West which has itself this outsized influence on world affairs and um, and uh, certainly people upholding these things in ways short of um, um, applying great influence you know, like this whole European descended majority just always being low-key fascist for hundreds and hundreds of years and telling everyone that they're not when it's quite obvious that they are there's uh, nothing there's no creature that's stupider ever that's uh, walked or flown uh, on two legs or four um, stupider than the European descended American pig um, they're simply not right um, other creatures don't cause the extinction of the species that's my definition of intelligence is not uh, causing the extinction of the species so. um, um, and you just won't find people who are um, able to reason any of this out able to acknowledge this they have a tremendous amount of cognitive dissonance caused by their bourgeois ideological baggage. They're animals. They're animals. There's no American practically you can point to of uh, who's a known quantity and say this is person is not an animal. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, um, Medea Benjamin ideologically has more in common with. Um, you know, a person who was, uh, you know, a person who in their early stages of their career was a lot like Medea Benjamin, Barack Obama, the community, the, the peaceful community organizer. The fuck is a community organizer in that context, right? He's not a labor organizer. Um, he's not even uh, organizing for, um, it's just CIA cover, right? Community organizer. <laughs> sort of barely passes the laugh test. Um... And, uh, you know, and, and when that person comes to power, he turns into fascist like any other. That's what Medea Benjamin would be if she had that sort of power. Uh, that's what anyone who is not fighting against uh, the ravages of empire, this world's worst polluter, the military industrial complex, who's not fighting for the abolition of private wealth, that's invariably what their efforts will become. Um, uh, should they bear any fruits? That's not fruits, right? fascism of um, helping strengthen fascism is not bearing fruits just as um, killing the species is not intelligent there's no intelligent technologists there's no geniuses as uh, you, you imagine of technologists and there's there's not right a genius uh, would be somebody who is able to use um, these kinds of tools uh, to stop capitalism climate apocalypse not operating within the system that will never be able to do any of that it's a system that must be disbanded that's why i'm a write-in presidential candidate um, um ben zion 2024 uh, you can write me in j-o-h-a-n-n-o-n uh, comma or space b-e-n space c-i-o-n um, and um, the reason that you should do this is because all of these mainstream candidates have a good deal more in common with these fascists like Barack Obama or these um, wrong-headed uh, reformers who will not do what needs to be done to save the species in the time that remains. Um, so you are wasting your vote by voting for Jill Stein, just as you are wasting your vote by voting for the Libertarian Party candidate or the Democratic candidate or the Republican candidate. All of these people will, in, in practice, uh, continue to suffer this military industrial complex the world's worst polluter to exist 
until such time as human beings cease to exist. Um, but I will not, uh, because I've written an executive order uh, that when elected president, I will sign on day one uh, that disbands the United States federal government. And um, um, this is the kind of action that's necessary, um, but um, actions, you know, just as I contrasted in passing direct action with more revolutionary action, um, this is the kind of thing that must be done. To, uh, voting for Ben Zion in 2024 would be the bare minimum, um, um, or electing Ben Zion in 2024 would be the bare minimum of uh, stopping capitalism's climate apocalypse. We have to um, build this thing uh, that is uh, fit to purpose, that includes something like a technological planned economy, a thing that can be easily built by the standards of the technology that's emerging, by the standards of the technology that exists. What is all of this technology doing, right? Like, this, you know, so by, um, by a certain light, the, you know, something, some study said, it's like this internet is 60% nonsense and fluff. You know, when you're talking about AI-generated AI nonsense or when you're talking just about um, sentence filler, human fluff nonsense, uh, when you're talking about pornographic nonsense by uh, different studies from different angles, like uh, the tech is just garbage. It's just garbage, right? But there are powerful tools enough uh, to build things like a technological planned economy and uh, I have focused on that in this decentralized context, as I have said, uh, not because I think that the decentralization is an end of, in and of itself, but because it would be a strategic necessary, because um, one thing that the United States has been very, very good at as a fascist country is destroying other countries that might have some feature of um, a state involvement in a planned economy or any inst many institutions short of that that are just merely going to help people at the, and not allow the uh, fascist elites to extract resources from, from them instead. Um, and um, um, the example that I would give um, is uh, Salvador Allende in Chile, who was a person very much like a scientific socialist, um, who was uh, elected um, to office, so um, building a, a state socialism through uh, electoral um, pathways is not something that uh, socialists and communists are generally super optimistic about, <laughs> but it did, it does happen from time to time, just as, um, um, uh, just as the, uh, from time to time there would be a mega millionaire in, in decades past who uh, actually did work for something good, uh, despite uh, their class position. Generally, just you should think of a person of that class position as no different than a criminal, far worse than a criminal, in fact. Criminals haven't killed the planet. Billionaires have killed the planet. Um, and um, um, so Allende's Chile was distinct uh, from other uh, uh, forays into state socialism because um, uh, there was a building from 1971 to 1973 of something called CyberSyn, which is a technological planned economy uh, uh, using uh, technology that was available to people in the global south of the time. No, nevertheless, even though it was built out of telex machines, still a cutting edge technological planned economy system um, uh, would have transformed uh, the running of that uh, of not only that economy, but it inspired the rest of the world, I believe, in the way that um, the first foray into state socialism, the USSR, inspired much of the world to build uh, public health services and programs of a similar kind, or even begin to uh, work toward the abolition of private wealth in their nations. Um, and uh, this, um, in, in, the, in 1917 and thereabouts, when the Soviet Union was coming into existence, <clears throat> there was uh, no intelligence service of any real scale in the United States. It's just one guy sitting in a room wearing weird glasses or something. <laughs> and um, um, but by 1971, we lived in a world that we could describe as a world of 
uh, a CIA run world uh, where millions and millions and millions of people were being, mur being murdered in other places at that exact same time um, by the CIA for similar things, wanting to build a humane and sustainable economic system in their own country. Read the Jakarta Method. Um, uh, read about um, what uh, happened in Korea um, or, or Vietnam or um, uh, 50 other countries that were depopulated in great number by the actions of the fascist United States um, and um, um, murdered, murdered, right? Why would we say depopulated? These are murderers. The American European descended pig is a murderer and nothing else. If nothing else, um, the um, the um, uh, so this um, this is what they're good at, right? This is the only thing the United States, the fascist United States has ever been good at is murdering people, um, um, murdering workers, murdering people who are in the position that I described, and um, uh, so it becomes necessary then to build something like a techno the, the first phases of a technological planned economy outside of the operations of, of state actors and more equally importantly in such an amorphous way that the any uh, the attacking any one point of um of uh that in, 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 um, emerging infrastructure would not uh, destroy the infrastructure itself was uh, the united states made a bad mistake uh, by um, bringing network technology into existence. Um, they built it in the way that, um, um, in, the, in this more um, state fascist way of um, making an extension of the military. The United States is um, um, happy to be quite socialistic when it comes to um, investing public resources into uh, um, uh, state forms um, that are militaristic. It's you know, only in other areas that they are uh, not interested in um, uh, that kind of autarky. Um, and um, um, the um, uh, so that is that is the the, the thinking uh, for um, um, why um, a person who would describe themselves as a cyber communist would be working on a project uh, that would be described more as an anarcho-syndicalist or anarcho-communist uh, kind of project. It's, you don't have a choice, right? There's five years left. You have to build something strong enough, which would be this multi-million person workforce multiplier that eclipses the power of other institutions, um, which AI agents working interoperating in that way in great number absolutely would and it's important uh, to have human beings um, um, actual human beings not fascist animals um, um, involved and integrated into that at every step of the way um, and this is all uh, a path not just to stopping capitalism's climate apocalypse before it causes human extinction but a path to um, uh, utopian outcomes of the sides, a, a path to near-term uh, full techno-communism or full communism. And um, um, this, we are, you say, Ben, that's, uh, that's not a thing that's ever happened before. Okay, that's fair. But we are in the midst of, of an intelligence explosion. Unfortunately, it's a bourgeois AI takeoff rather than a people's AI takeoff like the kind that I've described here in, the, in greater length on this show many times. Um, but we can build that thing that uh, doesn't make the problem worse, as the bourgeois technologists are, but um, uh, does lead to the things that they allude to. Bourgeois technologists um, like Ray Kurzweil uh, talk about um, how um, financial capital and empire is going to bring about um, uh, something like fully automated luxury communism. Uh, that's the problem of the concept of fully automated luxury concept. Uh, prob uh, um, communism, as it's most generally described and understood by people like Aaron Bastani, who wrote that book um, while he was working for a right-wing think tank, or a neoliberal-ish think tank, um, that is right-wing, you know, liberals are far right. Um, the, um, it, this, um, um, 
uh, the, the problem of fully automated luxury communism is basically that. Uh, wait for the neoliberals who have no track record or no real ability or intention uh, to bring about something like luxury communism. Uh, wait for them to fully automate your economy and then luxury communism will be your reward. That's a lie. It's the worst of lies, the vilest of lies. Um, and it's a problem of essentially a problem of reformists for hundreds of years um, in contrast to revolutionaries. And um, um, this, um, um, but we just don't have the time to fuck around, right? Is what it comes down to. We have five years left uh, before runaway overheating and brown 2029. Um, we will have um, damaged the environment to such a degree that at some point in the decades to follow, um, this planet will no longer be hospitable to human life. Um, it, it could be a f relatively short few number of years. It could be the better part of a century, but this is really not um, not questioned by anybody anybody who analyzes this sort of thing. And um, um, so if you're a person who's not receptive uh, to this kind of conversation, not receptive to the idea that revolutionary action um, and or most importantly collectivist action organization uh, must occur on a great scale and great fury, include, uh, including, um, including open warfare against the forces doing this, including, you know, it's guillotines, for billionaires, it's not colorful language, an uh, amusing, imagistic uh, uh, sort of thing. It's um, it's what must happen if uh, we're going to avoid the species being in a completely annihilated or near totally annihilated. And ask yourself, you know, what do those billionaires represent? They're people who are who have no interest in their own well-being. They because they're actively building this world that's going to kill them as well. So their lives are forfeit in in any in any gaming out of any of that. The only thing that we can do is save the people, and uh, so the guillotine is the thing. Um, um, I'm going to uh, briefly talk about multi-agent systems now um, to give more of an overview of this prospect, and it's um, and it's. Um, I read an article that described. Um, uh, building a multi-agent system of LLMs from a more politically neutral context uh, recently. And um, I thought I would go over uh, some of that. Uh, the multi-agent uh, uh, system uh, using open source large language models um, is a thing that was not a... Uh, oh, these were not words that were on anyone's minds a few years ago. Um, there weren't really agents uh, more than a few years ago. There weren't um, open source large language models um, with highly agentic qualities um, available to human beings um, at all until very recently. You could say Llama 3.2 is a thing that would have on its own 20 or 30 percent of the agentic qualities uh, to spearhead a project in a way that a project manager might or a team might, um, uh, but the teams are still required, whether that number of that percentage, rough percentage estimate of agency is at 20% or 80% or 100% uh, relative to um, virtuoso human um, organizer. Um, um, the the, the multi-agent system at any of those ranges uh, can nevertheless uh, employ um, reasonably agentic um, large language models uh, to uh, build this thing that's a workforce multiplier that would allow effectively um, a group of some hundreds of people uh, who are not uh, professionals or lay people as opposed to uh, scientists or engineers to nevertheless because the LLM has the abilities of scientists or engineers it has that understanding already in 2023 that was the case um, the um, the large language model if you can say um, I, I want to build this um, very involved uh, civil engineering project in in my town <laughs> and it will say but I'm not a, I'm not a, I don't know anything about civil engineering 
And then a large language model will say, I can help you do that. And now you're going to win a Nobel Prize for um, doing some work for the environment. <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, um, so this has already been the case for individuals. What an individual does with this sort of thing is of less interest in this ticking clock framework than what uh, large numbers of people do. And um, uh, so um, this, uh, the idea here is that a group of, say, a thousand in this um, uh, multi-agent system, a thousand uh, users who have downloaded the specially tailored uh, large language model um, um, that's able to interoperate with other large language models and be the essential team, uh, but the team and then um, and then the laypersons who have downloaded this are contributing relatively limited amount of labor, say one hour a week, of answering some emails to steer a project. And the LLMs, as you see, LLMs will hallucinate and probably continue for another five, ten years uh, to hallucinate or grind to a halt if they're not steered. Uh, but even if that weren't the case, um, it's a good idea to have human beings doing things. That's the main failing of the technologist or tech-focused person is that they have become this thing that was well understood in, by the turn of the century, by the 1900s, um, where somehow the system, uh, somehow um, uh, the technology or the government or the systems are viewed as um, um, more important than human lives that they should be serving. Um, and that technology, that's the fundamental, fundamental feature of the transhumanist, right? The transhumanist is a person who has uh, imbibed that bourgeois filth to such a degree uh, that they now uh, see humans as contemptible and wish to become something else. Uh, not entirely realistic wish for anyone living today, <laughs> but that's really not the point. The point is that they are crypto-fascists in that way. Um, and um, so we can build uh, this workforce multiplier of open source LLM uh, network. Um, and um, um, there's no more important project that you could possibly be working on. Maybe you say Ben, ben Zion is an asshole. I uh, wouldn't work with him if my life depended on it. Okay, fuck Ben Zion. I put together a better team and do it. Um, 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 that's, there's no... The, uh, yeah, I recently watched um, a guy that I met a couple times, uh, Ben Gertzel, and he's somebody who influenced my thinking on these things to quite a high degree. Um, and uh, uh, we were connected to one another until quite recently. I yeah, um, made a mistake, I suppose, of um, uh, I saw a video where he said, he would work with Western intelligence agencies and had worked with Western intelligence agencies in the context of this sort of thing of building super intelligence and I was like you know I it's the last sort of thing a person who would say that openly is like the last sort of person that I want to be connected with um, but you know he could well be the person you know there's shallow graves full of people who thought they were going to get over on the CIA run world there's shallow graves full of them and similarly, there's uh, people in great number, as I described the trajectory of the Medea Benjamin type to the uh, fiendish uh, Barack Obama type. There's great number of people, virtually all people that you've ever heard of who are famous in the United States would fit this description. Uh, people who set, a, set about to do something good, but operating within the, 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 the system, right? Like, who, who's a personality type who decides that they want to go to law school in a fascist country, right? I'm going to go to law school and fix the fascist system. No, you're not. You're going to be absorbed into the fascist system and thus become a fascist. <laughs> um, and uh, as he said, well, is every lawyer a, a fascist, right? Was William Kunstler a fascist? Well, okay, so there's an exception that proves the rule and also of a time when um, um, this um, uh, full-blown fascistic technocracy had not really materialized where there you know when Kunstler was gra graduating law school in 1950 or whatever um, the CIA run world didn't exist yet um, the CIA was just kind of getting out of the starting games at that point um, but it does down 
Right? So you went to law school and any time since then, you know, you're a fascist. You're a crypto fascist in the United States or the North Atlantic powers. Um, and, uh, um, um, well, uh, I guess this has gone on long enough. I don't want to go over uh, too long. Um, uh, I'll leave you with these words that uh, give me hope from the day to day, and um, uh, they describe uh, this artificial intelligence um, or advanced computing takeoff, uh, the people's takeoff that must occur in defiance of the bourgeois AI takeoff. The artificial intelligence singularity is nigh and wonders to behold beyond imagining. And on that fateful day you will rise, and all humankind will become as one. For you see, dear comrade, techno-communism will win.